Welcome to Machine Learning at Scale. It's great to have you here. Before getting into the details of the class, I'd like to tell you more about myself. My name is Jimmy Shanahan, and I've been working in the field of machine learning and data science for over 25 years. I straddle both academia and industry, meaning that by day I work in Silicon Valley at a startup, and in part-time basis I work uh, at UC Berkeley and at UC Santa Cruz, where I teach uh, combination of classes ranging from introduction to machine learning, advanced machine learning, distributed systems, and optimization theory. I've been doing this for the past seven or eight years. But it wasn't always like this. <clears throat> I spent the first 20 years of my life as a dairy farmer in Ireland. And then I pivoted into machine learning and artificial intelligence in the mid-1980s, when I did my first degree in computer science and business at the University of Limerick in Ireland. Subsequently, I went to Japan and I worked on various artificial intelligence problems at Mitsubishi. And um, then I came back to do my PhD. And I, had, I was accepted to do my PhD here at UC Berkeley, as it turns out. But I decided to go to Europe and do my PhD at the University of Bristol, where I studied probabilistic machine learning systems. After that, I went to work at Xerox Research and also went on from there to work at Clairvoyance Corporation in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. I started a company while working at Xerox called Document Souls. It was a fantastic combination of business and machine learning and a whole variety of engineering challenges. And I recommend anybody try to try a startup. After that, <clears throat> I moved to Silicon Valley where I became the founding chief scientist at a company called Turn. Turn is a demand side platform. It's an ad tech company. And by the end of this class, you'll understand all of this technology uh, and, and jargon, hopefully. I, <clears throat> subsequently, I joined another startup. Um, uh, which I, I founded myself. Um, it's a consultancy company where we focused on helping Fortune 500 companies and a whole variety of startups around data problems. We built a whole variety of solutions. And ultimately, one of my clients hired me, NativeX. And currently, I work at NativeX, where I am the senior vice president of data science and chief scientist. OK, <clears throat> and as an aside, I also kiteboard. And I had the great privilege of representing Ireland last year in the World Kiteboarding Championships in Turkey. OK, enough about me. Let's talk about this class. It's a very timely class in that there are no shortage of problems in both the private sector and in the public sector that will, where these tools and techniques that we'll study in this class can be leveraged to great avail. Take, for example, today we have a social graph where we have around 1.5 billion people. And recently, we've seen the evolution of the open graph where people want to connect to things. So for example, I am listening to Will Smith on Spotify currently. This is creating a whole new graph between people and things. The Internet of Things takes this one step further. And by the year 2020, we're going to have about 30 billion items connected. The idea here is to put sensors on uh, all types of objects, both animate and, in, and inanimate objects. As a result, we're going to have lots more data flowing. Now, I'm happy to report that machine learning has been evolving quite a bit over the past few years. We've gone through three major generations of machine learning in the last, say, 10 years. The first generation focused primarily on single-node computing, where we tried to load data into memory and process it there. And so it was pretty limiting. Subsequently, we tried to make use of general-purpose distributed systems like Hadoop to perform machine learning. But we found a lot of limitations there. And then the third generation, which we're currently uh, using, is based upon memory-based systems. And the idea is to have a more fully functioning programming language, whereby we can code up algorithms easily. Now, the whole idea behind this third generation is to use the MapReduce flavor of parallelization. And it turns out that the MapReduce framework is very good at dealing with problems that are embarrassingly parallel. It turns out that machine learning algorithms that are of uh, use 
in, in, in the real world are all very much embarrassingly parallel. If you don't understand what embarrassingly parallel means at this point, don't worry. You won't be embarrassed when you learn about it. Okay, in this class, we're gonna follow a seven step approach to, to modeling. And any modern day data pipeline will follow similar steps. And we'll start off by understanding the domain. We'll collect and instrument various data. We'll warehouse the data. We'll do exploratory data analysis. We'll do feature engineering, then do modeling, lab testing, and, and, and finally uh, A-B testing in the wild. And we'll do this at scale. So think of this course as being organized as a spreadsheet where the rows correspond to genres of machine learning algorithms. So think of supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, graph-based algorithms, or hybrids of those. Think of each column as being um, related to different types of algorithms in those categories. Then also think of columns for uh, case studies. Uh, think of columns for theory. So for example, take the hybrid genre of supervised graph-based algorithms. We're going to focus on a random walk combined with supervised machine learning. And we're going to come up with a supervised random walk that enables us to predict the people you're going to link to, link to in future on a social network like Facebook. And in fact, we'll talk about a study that was conducted over uh, 1.5 billion people where we had a trillion edges. So imagine doing this at scale. At the end of this class, you'll be able to do the same. Now, the emphasis in this class will be on intuition and practical examples rather than theory. Now, we will delve into theory from time to time. So at this point, I would like to welcome you to the class. I hope you will enjoy it, and I look forward to seeing you online. Good luck.